Hi everyone, welcome back to another car making tutorial. I am so excited to show you this project today because it is my favorite style which is very bold and vibrant colors. There's a lot of ink blending, coloring, and we're making a light up car today as well. So let's get right into it. I'll start by stamping some images. This is a stamp set I'm using today and it has a lot of gemstones in it. I did also clear heat emboss after stamping as well since we'll be doing some watercoloring. Then I used my trimmer to cut the watercolor panel at an angle. Next we're going to do some die cutting. I used a bunch of sizes from two sets of dies from Spellbinders. When I stamped the images, I did use these dies to trace circles onto my watercolor panel so that I know where to stamp. And then I erased all the pencil marks. I did also emboss the top panel with a next level gemstone embossing folder. This panel was the one that we trimmed off earlier in the video. Now it's time for some ink blending. I haven't used my distress inks in a while and this is the perfect opportunity to create a very vibrant and bold background. My favorite is rainbow colors so I'll be using those today. I started the blending with different shades of blues. Then I worked towards the reds and oranges and then finally move on to some yellow and greens. Ink blending typically takes a long time. I've cut out the process to save time here, but if you're interested in watching the entire process, I'll leave a link to my video on my personal channel. That one includes the whole process of ink blending and shows all the colors that I've used. So here's the final ink blended piece. I do like how the colors blend into each other, they have very smooth transitions, but I also want to add a little bit more texture. So here I am splattering some water droplets onto the color panel. You can let it sit for 20 to 30 seconds and then soak up the excess water with a paper towel. Because the dressings are reactive with water, you end up with this really cool effect and I think it just adds the right amount of interest to your background. Now we can watercolor the focal images, which are the diamonds and gems we stamped earlier. I'm using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens for today's coloring. Typically when I watercolor, I like to wet the surface with my water brush, just plain old water. But since we're coloring very small areas today, you can totally skip this step. I'm also not very concerned with the coloring techniques or the light source. Basically what I want is just laying down a bunch of colors, which the set has. The set has 80 colors to choose from, and basically just alternating different shades in between each area. Again, I'll fast forward to the part where all the watercoloring is done, but if you're interested in seeing how I actually watercolor with these real brush pens, Feel free to watch the entire process on my channel. After I finished watercoloring the gemstones, I decided to also add some color to the backgrounds of the circles. I do think the white backgrounds look very good as well. It's just a different type of look. For today, I kind of just want to pack as much color into these panels as possible. These watercolor pens are really so easy to use. Here you can see that I achieved the watercolor look just by laying down some clean water and then adding some colors from the brush pens. Then I blended the edges with my water brush. And if you want to achieve a really organic feel, you can repeat this process a couple times, but I do recommend using the heat gun to dry in between layers. And I'm also purposely using colors that are contrast against the ink blended background. For example here, um, I picked this bright blue because it will go really strongly against the blended red and greens in the background. And then for the purple gem, I chose red so that it will contrast nicely against the surrounding blue colors. I like to call this technique the double rainbow effect, which is basically um, using a set of rainbow colors and then contrasting that set of rainbow colors with another set of rainbow colors. I don't know if that makes sense at all. I'll put a picture of a past project that I did before that uses the same double rainbow effect that I'm trying to achieve here. Now I know that I've already added so much color to this project, but I am not done yet. 
I decided to spritz on even more color droplets. After covering the main images with some masking paper, I'm putting the die cut circles into my splatter box. Then I press my distress ink onto an acrylic block. This way I can use a damp water brush to pick up the colors and splatter over the die cut piece. I only did this step to the three larger circles. For the other two I thought they were too tiny to kind of see the difference. But I did decide to add on white paint splatters to all of the panels. The step is essentially the same except you are going to use white acrylic paint this time. For the very very last step before we move on to the light up mechanism, I decided to add on some gold splatters to the ink blended background as well. I'm using my Wink of Stella glitter brush, but if you like, you can also use some gold acrylic paint. And now we're ready to add on some LED lights using Chibitronic products. I'm starting off by making the battery holder. After I made sure that the opening is facing to the left, I'm securing it down with some double-sided tape. The direction is important if you want to make a on-off switch with the circuit, and I'll explain it later in the video. Next, I trace my electrical pathway, and I'm cutting the copper tape in half so that it'll be easier to manipulate. Then I'm sticking the copper tape according to the sketch lines.
Here's what the completed circuit looks like. Once you make sure that the circuit works properly, you can then start to assemble all the pieces together. I'm doubling up the foam tape so that it'll be higher than the battery thickness. This way, you'll have to press down slightly to activate the circuit. Remember in the beginning of the video, I made sure that the opening of the battery holder is facing to the left, and that's because I want to insert a little piece of paper here as a circuit stopper. When it's inserted, it'll block the contact on one side of the copper tape to the battery so that basically the circuit is incomplete. You can use this little switch to ensure that during mailing or when you are storing this card away, that the circuit doesn't drain all of the battery's power. Lastly, I added some gold foil die cuts and some cinnamon strips to complete the card. And that is the whole project for today. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope I've inspired you to make something sparkly and shiny. And if you enjoyed this very colorful rainbow project, I would love to know in the comments below. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!